Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be filling up our 20 gallon tank with water. We're going to scape it and we're going to get everything ready to go for our fish. So the tank we have here is a 20 gallon aquarium LED kit. I did a review on this and I also purchased a stand and we built that. I did a review on that as well. So if you guys want to see what these tanks are here and the stand is, uh, look below in the description. I will post those. But let's go ahead. I did one thing before uh, I did the video and I put this background on. So I'll add that in here, um, how to put on a background properly, kind of so you have no gaps and it's gonna be nice and clean for your tank. All right, so I got the back of my aquarium here and I have this already cut. I put it on a board, I got a nice straight line. I cut uh, the sides and the bottom because I had a big piece. The way you wanna size this up from the left of the tank to the right of the tank, it's a little bit short of the frame and it's almost exactly the size of the glass. So instead of just putting it right here, taping it on or putting it up here, taping it on, you actually can go ahead and slide the corner under the frame on both sides and you'll push that up a little bit. That's going to block any of the light. Water will never be able to get behind the background and we'll slide that all the way up there. Make sure it's straight on both sides. This can maybe angle a little bit like that and then I'll take the bottom all the way down here maybe leaving a small gap and then I will still tape this but if you tape the bottom it really would hold itself because it's nowhere the, bottom, the top can fall. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Um, if you need to, take a piece of tape anywhere, just put it there so now I can take my hands are free. I'm gonna go to the bottom of the tank, line it up along the glass. Uh, you can go a little bit short because it's silicone, you won't be able to see through. And you want this to be nice as possible because most of these tanks, once you do this, you're never really gonna touch it. Um, you can go back and obviously change it, but if you're gonna have an aquarium for multiple years, you wanna take your time setting up the background. If it takes you an extra five minutes to do it, you wanna take your time and do that. So taking those pre-cuts was what really took me the longest. But I'm just gonna do that maybe three or four times. You really could do one long strip across if I lay it on its back. Probably be easier to do that. But this is gonna work just fine, I believe. So now that you guys know how to do that, it's pretty simple. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put sand in this, we're gonna fill up our aquarium, we're gonna dechlorinate it, and we're gonna put some stuff in there. So let's look. All right guys, so here's a closer look at the tank. So the tank's already prepped. We have our uh, filter or heater there. I've wiped the glass out um, just because it was new. Make sure there's no dust in there if you buy it from the store. This was in a box, so it was all real clean. Um, now all we're gonna do is add our sand. Um, this sand here is nice because it's kind of like a crushed gravel. Uh, it'll add a nice color to the tank, it's just like a white sand. Um, I'll post that in the description because there are different sands that you use and they're going to be very fine and they're going to float around, they're going to cloud your water. This helps settle down and it's actually possible to do gravel backs on. Some sands you do, it's going to be very hard to gravel back because it's too fine. This is denser and it will sink to the bottom. Um, when you gravel back it, you will have to do it slowly, but it is possible and it looks really nice. So I'll speed this up real quick. I'll just kind of fill this up with sand and we'll move on to our plants. So now we have all the sand in there. I'm just gonna smooth it out to make it look nice so I can see what my scaping is gonna be like. But ultimately when you fill this up, the sand's gonna get moved around anyways and things are gonna change. But basically this will give me an idea of how much I wanna put in there. And when I fill up the tank, I can put a little bowl in there and fill the bowl up so it doesn't start around as much. But we're gonna get the sand in there first while it's dry. So I'm not working with wet sand whenever it's just full of water and there's less splashing around whenever I have my hands in the tank. So that's the sand. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is add some plants. So for my plants here, guys, I bought these at the store earlier today. They are some natural aquarium plants. Um, they're just fake. Uh, I have done live plants, but it's gonna be a quick setup. So we're gonna go ahead and add these two in there. Um, and everything we're using today, they will all be in the descriptions below. Um, so we'll take these out of the packaging. All right, so now that they're out, I'm um, simply just going to place these in there. I'll probably do the taller one um, somewhere in front of the filtration to kind of hide the heater and the uh, filter intake. 
And then the shorter plant, good rule of thumb is whenever you're escaping your tank, you want your taller, darker plants in the back and your brighter, shorter ones in the front. These both aren't very different in color, so it's not gonna matter a whole lot. But typically you wanna escape the front with shorter and the back with taller to give your tank more depth than just putting them randomly. That's usually gonna look the best. And um, we can still move this around, but as for right now, I think the tank's already looking pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and we're gonna add some water. Okay guys, so the next step for filling the tank up, um, this isn't a must, but I like to use a little bowl uh, since I already put my substrate in. So this is a little square bowl I'll put right here where the water's gonna fill up. And then I have my um, custom PVC Python hose. Uh, these Python hoses are very handy for water changes, especially filling tanks uh, when you get them for the first time. So we're just gonna hang this on right here. I have my dechlorinator over there. And since there's no fish in the tank, we can dose the entire tank's dechlorinator right away, or you can space it out. Whenever you're doing water changes on your fish, obviously you wanna dose the entire aquarium on a large water change. And then as it's filling, you wanna add the chlorinator slowly. So let's go ahead, I have my water set. I'm gonna go turn it on and then reverse it into the tank and we'll start filling it up. So now that our tank's filling, you can use, I have two different dechlorinators here. One is the Aquion, which came with the aquarium, and I recommend using this because you got it for free or you came with the set, may as well use it. But I also have a safe or a prime dechlorinator. Um, this is more concentrated, it'll last longer. Um, I know the dose of this off the top of my head, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do four milliliters of this, and that will be for 20 gallons. Uh, whenever it's all filled up, I might do another five gallons. That's really all you need. So this tank's gonna slowly fill up. Once it gets to about here, I can plug my filter in. And once it gets full, I will stop the water, um, check the temperature. And if it's close to where I want it to be, uh, I'll let the heater sit in the water for about 10 minutes, then I'll turn that on. Um, it's important not to turn that heater on right away, especially if this tank's cold or hot from being in the car, depending on what time of the year it is, and you just brought it home for the first time. You don't let that heater sit in water for about 10 minutes so you don't get any cracks and it functions very well. So I'm gonna speed this up on the camera, but we're gonna have to fill this tank all the way up. Okay guys, so now that our tank's completely filled, um, there will be some air bubbles if you want to go around. Uh, you don't have to. I like to kind of wipe them off the tank, help it settle a little bit faster. And as we're doing this, we'll give our tank a few minutes to let the heater sit so we're not plugging that right away. So if you want to go around, just wipe the sides of the tank. Um, if any of the sand needs put back where it was, you can fix the bottom, move your plants around. Uh, really see it with water in it to see if it uh, looks the same way empty. Um, if you want different depth to your tank, or just to clean things up a little bit. So I'm gonna go around, just wipe off the edges to make it look nice. And then we're gonna go ahead and plug in our filter and we're gonna plug in the heater. Um, right before I do that, I actually can do that right now. Uh, the tank I can feel, it's probably around 78 degrees, um, give or take. So I have a little uh, device here, it's a little heat gun here. You can put that right on the tank and it's telling me 76, 75, so the tank is definitely warm enough, uh, but it needs to be warmer, so we will plug that heater in. So that'll be our next step. Okay, so everything's ready to go. The last thing we need to do is just plug them in. Uh, whenever you're starting your filter, though, especially for the first time and it's empty, it's good to add some of the aquarium water to the back of it. That way when you turn it on, it's not gonna be um, running dry. So I'll add a little bit of water to that. And then I have everything hooked up down here to an extension cord. So it's nice to have something, there's a hole cut in the back of the stand so you can run a cord through. So you have one cord on the wall, comes in and then you have your power source for everything else. And we're simply just gonna plug in our heater and our filter. You'll hear the, the filter right away kick on. And I believe it's already flown some water out, which is really good. Sometimes it'll kind of run for a few seconds and that's when you'll add a little bit more water and then it'll, it'll get its uh, pump running and you'll be good to go. So I believe that's about everything. Um, I know it wasn't the best view, so I'm actually gonna take a step back, get a shot of just the tank and how everything looks. So here's kind of a closer look on our tank. 
Um, not a whole lot going on, but I think it looks really nice. So we have our nice white sand on there. Some nice artificial plants that look very realistic. And it'll be a little bubbly for the first day or two till everything kind of settles in. But I really think this tank looks nice. All right guys, so that about wraps up the video. We've got our tank set up. It's pretty much ready for fish. Um, the last thing I'll do, I'll have a filtered tank already that I'm gonna add some bacteria to this tank from it. Um, so this tank will be ready for fish in a day or two instead of a week or two, um, which is really nice. Hopefully this gave you guys some inspiration on building your own tank and kind of setting it up. Uh, this entire setup probably cost me under $250, which isn't bad at all, and I bought everything brand new. And um, You can shop around, find different things, but this was super convenient. It was easy, and it's ready to go, ready for fishing. I think I'm going to go with some angelfish and rams. Well, let me know what you guys think. Uh, thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for more videos.